Welcome back fellow reefers. I'm currently in the fish room today just doing some maintenance and cleaning up and what have you. Um, I'm actually in the process of draining the first stage of quarantine that I put the copper in. Um, basically I'm going to be attempting to catch the remainder of the fish that are in the main and get them over into that quarantine system. Uh, the fish trap has been sitting in there for about a week now to get them used to it being in there. They're starting to go in and out of it now. When I put food in, they go in and out. So it's going to basically be down to trying to catch them. So long story short, um, I'm in the process of making uh, a really neat video for that. It's going to take a little bit longer because I want to really do it right. Got to get all the footage and everything of, of me catching a fish and everything. But I'm basically just doing this video right now. I just recently had a comment left on my calcium reactor. And basically, they were wondering why they have so many bubbles inside the reactor. Now, this happens to me occasionally too. I'd say every time we have a power outage, when the power is off, it seems like when it comes back on, I get all kinds of bubbles in the reactor. Now, these bubbles seem to go away after time. However, after initially setting up my calcium reactor, you can see right here, um, you know, you flush that all out when you first set it up and then you get all the bubbles out. Well, basically, on my Kamoa, let me see if I can get this digital display in here. Uh, is it zooming good? I don't know. But I'm currently running 10.7 milliliters a minute. <clears throat> With that being said, I'm not really pumping that much uh, effluent back into the uh, the sump or I'm not even pulling that much into the reactor so if you're watching this and you do have a calcium reactor my theory and I could be wrong because like I, this is the first time I've ever had a calcium reactor so but my theory is I'm not pushing 40 50 60 milliliters per minute so like you would because when you first started i mean you ramp up that kimura as high as it can go and you just let it do its thing to pull all the air out well what i think is going on is i am not pushing or pulling that much effluent or even tank water through the reactor to push that air out so it, it's it's remaining trapped in there it doesn't seem to have an effect, to be honest with you, on the KH level. It just seems like there's air in there and it just seems annoying. But let me show you, this is what I got going on right now. You can see all of the air. And if you look down here, I mean, I mean, there's air bubbles just pumping through there. But, like I said, I just think that, I, now, the person who left a comment, which I, I can't remember who it was at this moment, he's had his running maybe, like, I think he said, like, a year now. Um, now, depending on how many corals he has, his uptake of KH and or calcium, it may be little. He may be, he may be uh, pushing 10 milliliters, like I am. I don't know. I don't know what he was pushing through or pulling through. If you have any experience with calcium reactors, I mean, am I right by thinking that I'm just not pushing or pulling enough through the reactor to get rid of the bubbles and they're just staying in there? Um, and once time progresses, get more corals, more uptake, you know, and I have to increase that, the bubbles will essentially go away then. That's my guess. So please leave a comment below if you have experience with reactors. Um, I'm curious and it may help out this uh, viewer that left this comment. So 
Uh, until the next video is finished, we'll see you on the next one.